<lacht> Yo, äh, Party People, äh, Silly Huhn wieder am Start. Äh, und Nidado ist auch wieder hier äh, am Stizzle und wir sind natürlich hier auf äh, LGL, dem, äh, dem besten Server auf der Welt. Laser Gurken Land, IP 149.202.147.134. Ähm, ja, und was den Talk angeht, ich glaube, wir pumpen heute. Wir pumpen heute. Jailbreaking Apple Watch. Das klingt Hi, doch everyone. nice. My name is Max ähm, hier von äh, Max Basali. Jailbreaking Apple Watch von der DEFCON Conference von der Nummer 25. Um, ja, let's see, wie viel man da okay. von hört. Okay. Um, ja, let's go. Once again, yeah, I'm Max Basali and I'll talk about jailbreak in Apple Watch. I work as security researcher at Lookout when I focus okay, on Okay, this is a bit loud. I don't know. Last year I was a lead researcher wie, on a Pegasus exploit chain. You heard, um, and you're good, you're mich noch hört. I don't know. Software, hardware, uh, aber let's go. And I'm after of various jailbreaks for iOS, tvOS and now for watchOS. So what is Apple Watch? Uh, it is a smartphone device that was released in 2015 and it's used Apple S1 or S2 processor. Uh, it's basically a 32-bit architectural processor uh, called the IRM7K, uh, which is derived from IRM7A. Uh, it uses a deprecate engine for uh, user notifications, it has a 512 megabytes of RAM, and it's running the watches, which is derived from an iOS. Ja, da waren wir noch mal lucky, so, dass niemand Kram geklaut hat, weil es ist schon ein paar Tage her. Aber es wohl echt nicht viel los auf dem Server. And so it should be pretty interesting from a security researcher point of view. Why not give it a try? Why not try to jailbreak it? Because it's Mm. If I can jailbreak it, I can have access to file system so I can like check the watches internals. And it should be just fun to run uh, debuggers for like Radar or Frida on this tiny uh, Apple Watch screen. Uh, or use it as iPhone attack vector to send some more formal data to the iPhone. So before jumping into uh, jailbreak internals, let's make a quick overview of the Apple Watch security. We start from a secure boot chain, where the, each element in the boot chain is checked to be properly signed by Apple, and it basically stops boot if it's not. The next thing is when oh the Apple is signed, so all code that is running on the watch OS should be signed by a trusted party. The sandbox, ah, and the which is limiting application access to other applications data, and limiting application access to critical system APIs. Exploit mitigations, like address space layout, randomization on user mode and the kernel mode, heap and stack cookies, and of course the data execution prevention. Starting from second generation of Apple Watch, there is a hardware-baked secure and clear processor that's used for safe crypt operations. And the data protection, so all user data is encrypted when device is blocked. That's cool. So, as we're thinking about the well, speaking English. <laughs> and the first idea was, mm, and this is to send some hmm. more format payload or even like fast USB descriptors. Because there is a ah, yeah, ich wollte uh, das Bett hinschieben. Wenn wir uh, some of the things, we see like this small port. The problem here, uh, the cables from this debug port to USB, they are not public. So I don't want to mess with all the non-public hardware, so I decided to switch for other way. The other way will be send a malformant emails or messages or photos from a phone to a watch and try to basically um, attack the parser. Well, this will be still limited by sandbox, the parsers. So I, I need additional out of sandbox bug to uh, continue the, the jailbreak. Well, starting from WatchOS 2, Apple added the support for um, user-defined application extensions, which is basically the native code that's running on a WatchOS. So I decided to stay on this one. It looks pretty good, and I have a freedom on a bug choice. So, to choose one of the uh, uh, unfixed bugs and, and use it for a jailbreak. So this is how the jailbreak may look like. So first of all, we need to locate the kernel in memory. 
All the security measurements are in a kernel, so we need to patch a kernel to disable them. For this one, we need to break a geyser and find the kernel base, then read the whole kernel to user mode, start analyzing it, look for a gadgets, set up a primitives, like read-write, then finally patch a kernel to disable security restrictions, and to run the SSH client on a watch. Well, looks doable. So, as I say, uh, I have a few versions of uh, watchOS at home, like watchOS 2 and watchOS 3, and I started looking for a good box. Uh, for watchOS 2, there is a pretty good bug, the CV4656, which is user-free in a kernel, and this bug is famous because it's a part of the Pegasus export chain. So this may be a pretty good candidate. As alternative way, it's CV4669, which is a MAC port register. Uh, it can be exploited on 32 bits as a free in a ROM zone. But I decided to stay with OS centralized because it's more stable. As for WatchOS 3, there are two bugs, CV7644, uh, CTP control, which was uh, uh, discovered and exploited by IMB in a Mac portal jailbreak, and CV2370, which is heap overflow in voucher extractor site. It was used later by a look at the desk in Yalo 10.2. So I decided to stay with CV2370 or WatchOS 3. Okay, uh, we now know a box, how to get the kernel level code execution. Let's start from leaking a kernel base. There are a few good CVs, uh, series 4655 and CV 4680. They both share the same problem. So because during the parsing in the kernel, one of the objects, which is like OS number object, uh, it's basically object constructor missing the bound checking, which leads the attacker can create OS number with a high number of bits. And later on, um, this high number of bits will be used as an object LAN. And the object LAN will be used to copy uh, how many bytes we need to copy from a kernel stack to a kernel heap and return to user of LAN. So that leads that kernel stack memory will be leaked and we can determine a kernel base. And this bug can be triggered from a sandbox. I will check more detail. So the bug is in IS centralized binary, which is a method to handle uh, binary centralized data. Uh, it converts the binary format to a basic kernel data objects like arrays, strings, booleans, numbers, and so on. And the problem is when um, the parser goes to IS number. The IS number represents the uh, number object in a kernel. And it basically blindly draws the input arguments, here the value and len, and just calls the designated constructor which is OS number init. And here's a problem, because uh, one of the arguments, which is new number of bits, is set to one of the class variable size, and this size will be used later on on other method OS number number of bytes. It's lit that a return value of number of bytes is fully controlled by attacker. And why is bad? Well, later on in IO registry entry get property bytes, this uh, number of bytes method will be used to calculate the uh, OS number length. And which is bad because OS number of value is stored on a kernel stack. Uh, here it is an offset byte uh, buffer. And basically the object length will be used to copy that many bytes from a kernel stack that needed from, from this buffer and return to user mode. As we control the how many bytes will be copied, we can control, well, like, 255 bytes and basically leak some of the kernel memory. 